Tegna Inc. is a $12.72 stock. But Yahoo Analysts estimate that it can move up to $19.13 in the next 12 months. That would be a 48.76% increase. Hey guys, today we're going to be doing the analysis on a stock called Tegna Inc. Now, Tegna Inc. is a $12.72 stock. But Yahoo analysts estimate that it can move up to $19.13 in the next 12 months. That would be a 48.76% increase. And bear in mind, sometimes the um, estimates from Yahoo may be a little conservative. Now, I like to break my stocks down into three, st three tiers. Three stars, which are the most fundamentally sound. Two stars, which are beneath that. And one star, which is the least fundamentally sound, but still fundamentally sound enough to be on the watch list. Tegna is a two star. They have an earnings report dropping on August 7th. And I like to say earnings support is sort of like going to a casino. It can come out good and the stock can considerably jump. It can come out bad and the stock can drop. There's no way to know. In any event, we're looking at a weekly chart here. We see that this company climbed, but then after climbing, Right about here, it took a significant drop. It's been going f sideways and down for a bit now. We've just had two big weeks drops here. Now, I'm going to give you the fundamental analysis for this stock. We're going to jump over and look at the fundamentals. But I always say the fundamentals tell you what to buy. The technicals meaning the candlestick chart tells you when to buy. So you want to keep an eye on the candlestick chart and see when it starts to move back up before jumping in. Having said that, let's jump over and take a look at the fundamentals for this stock. Now, for those who saw any of my previous videos, on stock analysis, let's say about two months ago or more, you would have seen that all the analysis I gave you was broken down on spreadsheets. And I had to manually search for these companies and fill out all of the financial information for them. However, now that's no longer a need. Now I have this app which pulls up the fundamentally sound companies for you and pulls in all the information for you. So I'm going to show you all the fundamentals from this app and this app can be found at stocksagesoftware.com and all for the price of $129 a year, you can have access to all of this information yourself. But having said that, let's jump in and look at our stock. So what the Stock Sage app does is every day, it looks at the 52 week low for the stock market. All of the stocks that are at their annual low price. And for all of the ones that have three or more years 
of positive earnings in the past five years, it pulls them up for you. So here we see all of these stocks with at least three positive years of earnings. But that doesn't mean it's fundamentally sound. That just means they made money for three of the last five years. Because there are a lot of stocks on the market that don't even make money. You may go through a five-year period where they've lost money every year. These are companies that have made money at least three of those five years. But we can narrow it down and find stocks that are even more fundamentally sound. The app automatically pulls up companies where their total assets are greater than their total liabilities. But it doesn't automatically pull up companies where the current assets are greater than the current liabilities unless you click here and it will narrow it down and make that list even smaller you know now that these are companies with strong balance sheets but what about profits you have a lot of companies that make a lot of money but in the end after they pay their expenses they're only making 2% a year, 5% a year, 7% a year on their income statements. Well, let's say that we choose greater than 10%. Now this list gets considerably smaller because now it's only showing companies that have 10% or greater profit margins for the last five years and if you want to make it even smaller you can click greater than 20 percent and now we see our list has moved down to just three companies we could say all years the company did stock buybacks for all years now it's only one company but I'm going to choose three years of stock buybacks, bring it back down to greater than 10%. And this is where we see there's only a few of them, only four. And our first one is Tegna. Tegna is the stock we're analyzing. So I'm going to click on our ticker symbol. And it pulls up Tegna. It tells us at the top what the company does. They deal in media, television stations, and so forth. Of the things that they mention, one of them that I'm very familiar with because I've watched it before is True Crime Network. But in any event, let's jump down and take a look at the numbers for these com for this company. Now I'm going to open up Yahoo Finance because we can get some information from them as well. So if I go to yahoo.com and I click on finance it brings me to Yahoo Finance. I'm going to open the ticker symbol. I actually already have this information filled in, but I want to show you where it comes from. Okay. So... The first thing that we see is what we saw on the first page. The five-year earnings per share for this company. That's their complete earnings or profits divided by the number of outstanding shares. In 2019, it was $1.32. 2020, it was $2.20. 2021 it dropped a little two dollars and fifteen cents 
but in 2022 it rose again, $2.82. 2023 it dropped a little, $2.29, but now we're in 2024, and this is not the hard figures because the year is not over yet, but it's projected so far to be $2.88. That may drop a little, it may go up more by the end of the year. But so far it's projected to be $2.88, which is higher than 23 and 22. Now, let's look at the high and low prices for this stock. In 2019, this stock was at $9.43 at its low price, $15.59 at its high price. We see that here and here. And if we come down to the bottom, percentage increase, it shows us how much of an increase that was in the stock price from the bottom to the top. So that was a 65.25% gain. In 2020, it was $8.73 at a slow price, $16.63 at its high price. That was a 90.53% gain. In 2021, it was $12.70 at its low price, $20.68 at its high price. That was a 62.89% gain. Now in 2022, it was $16.87 at its low price, $21.69 at its high price. That was a 28.57% gain. And in 2023, it was at $13.33 at its low price, $21.35 at its high price. That was a 60.23% gain. And right now, it's at $12.72. change that. We see the price down here. So I'm gonna, this is just a few cents. But I'm going to change that. It's at $12.72 at its low price. And Yahoo Analysts, now this, in, if you get the app, this will be empty. I filled this in earlier. But you could see it by going to Yahoo Finances page, putting in the ticker symbol. And on the summary tab, right here at the bottom, there is a one-year target estimate. This is how high Yahoo expects this to move up one year. And I put it in here and hit enter. And it will show you that's a 50.39% gain. But bear in mind, sometimes Yahoo's target estimates can be a little conservative, so it may move up even higher. Now we see this is an expensive stock. Currently $12.72. The current PE is 4.42 which is significant because generally with the stock the low price will jump around and change every year 9 8 12 16 13 
so you may never be able to predict when a stock is at its low price. But if you look at the low PE, it's a closer indicator because those low PEs are in a pretty close range. In 2021, it was 5.9. 2022 was 5.99. 2023 it was 5.82. 2019 it was even higher, 7.16. And in 2020 it was 3.97 and dropped. But bear in mind, 2020 was the COVID lockdown year. So a lot of things dropped a lot lower that year. So if I look at the P.E. for the last five years, I would probably say, okay, if this stock falls to a P.E. range of five, I would probably consider buying it. Well, what is the current P.E. right now? 4.42. It's below five. It does give a dividend, and the dividend yield is, the, the last dividend yield is 3.67. And like I said, it drops the earnings report on August 7th. And the book value 15.73. So the book value is actually higher than the price right now with a free cash flow yield averaged over five years of 25.04%. Now let's look at the fundamentals for this company. We're going to go down to the income statement and we see that in 2019 this company made two billion two hundred and ninety nine million four hundred and ninety seven thousand in total sales and revenue of that after paying all expenses they retained two hundred and eighty six million two hundred and thirty five thousand that was a twelve point four five percent profit margin remember we chose stock to see stocks with a profit margin greater than ten percent in twenty twenty this company made two billion nine hundred and thirty seven million seven hundred and eighty thousand. So that was the COVID lockdown year, but their media, so they actually made more than the previous year. Of that they retained four hundred and eighty one million eight hundred and thirty thousand. That was a sixteen point four percent profit margin. In 2021, they made two billion nine hundred and ninety-one million ninety-three thousand. Of that, they retained four hundred and seventy-seven million one thousand. That was a fifteen point ninety-five percent profit margin. In 2022, they made three billion two hundred and seventy-nine million. 245,000. Of that, they retained 629,909,000. That was a 19.21% profit margin. And in 2023, they made 2,910,930,000. That was a 19 Four hundred and seventy four million nine hundred and fifty three thousand. That was a sixteen point thirty two percent profit margin. So we see that the sales and revenue are increasing every year until twenty twenty three, where it dropped off some. And so did the net income, which brought down the profit margin. Now, if we go to the balance sheet, 
we see that as far as their return on equity, when we see a return on equity of about 10%, we'll say, okay, that's about, that's decent. Around 20% or greater, we start to get excited. Well, in 2019, their return on equity was 18%. In 2020, it was 23.41%. In 2021, it was 18.93%. In 2022, it was 20.51%. And in 2023, it was 17.56%. So I would say there... Return on equity is definitely decent, even a little better than decent. It's exceeded 20% a couple of years in the last five years, and it's been towards the top um, consistently. In any event, their debt to equity could be improved, but it's not horrible. We want to see a debt to equity below 200%. You have some companies that ride above that. You have some that ride significantly above that. For example, banks. But in 2019, their debt to equity was 337.25%, 2020, 232.04%. It's dropping regularly. In 2021, it was 173.88%. 2022 was 138.03%. And in 2023, 158.1%. So in the last three years, it's been below that 200%. And we see that if we go to the balance sheet itself, for all five years, current assets exceeded current liabilities, which we want to see, and total assets exceeded total liabilities, which we want to see. We don't want to see liabilities above assets. Now we get down to the cash flow statement. And when we get to the cash flow statement, we see that this company paid a dividend all five years. 2019, they paid 60,624,000 in dividends. 2020, 76,465,000 2021 78,465,000 2022 84,756,000 and 2023 83,534,000 so they're paying a dividend consistently now, what we as investors love to see is when the companies that we're investing in buy back shares of their own stock. What we hate to see is when they sell more shares of their own stock. Well, this company for the first two years did both. In 2019, they sold 1,953,000,000 worth of shares and they bought back 819,000 worth. In 2020, 2020, they bought or they sold 1,550,000,000 worth of shares of stock and they bought back 9,208,000 worth. In 2021, 
they didn't buy back or sell. Same with 2022. But in 2023, they didn't sell more shares, but they bought back six hundred and fifty two million nine hundred and fourteen thousand worth as far as free cash flow this company had free cash flow all five years money left over at the end of the year two hundred and nine million one hundred seventeen thousand in 2019 seven hundred and fifty nine million six hundred and thirty seven thousand and twenty twenty four hundred and thirty eight million five hundred and thirty six thousand in twenty twenty one seven hundred and seven hundred seven hundred and sixty million eight hundred and eighteen thousand twenty twenty two and five hundred and thirty two million five hundred and fifty five thousand in twenty twenty three however one of the biggest things i like to check a company for if they give a dividend is whether they can really afford to give a dividend or if they're just giving that dividend to attract people to buying their stock. Because the dividend is paid from the free cash flow. So after they paid their dividends, did they have any free cash flow yet left? Or was it a negative number? Well, in 2019, they had 148,493,000 left. 2020, they had 683,172,000 left. 2021, they had 360,071,000 left. 2022, they had 676,062,000 left. And in 2023, they had 449 million 21,000 left. So this company is looking good so far, even though it's a small company, it's a cheap stock. Now, this app was not able to pull in all of the data that I would like to have when doing analysis on the stock. But there are boxes for you to fill in the information that the app was not able to pull automatically. And I'm going to show you where to find that information. If we go back to Yahoo Finance and change from the summary tab over to statistics and scroll down under share statistics it tells us what percentage of this stock is held by insiders that is those who work for or are involved with the organization and what percentage is held by institutions such as large banks and so forth. And we see that institutions is 1.38%. You can just click in there and type that in. And I'm sorry, insiders is 1.38%. Institutions is 93.35%. Now, if we scroll down a little further, we'll find information such as the ex-dividend date and the dividend date. The dividend date is when they pay the dividend to shareholders. The ex-dividend date is the date 
that you have to own that stock by in order to be eligible for that dividend. So if we go here, we see they're paying a dividend. I think that's backwards. They're paying a dividend on June 7th. Um, on, they're paying a dividend on July 1st, which have, hasn't come yet. But you have to own the stock by, or I should say before June 7th, to be eligible. So you would have had to own the stock by June 6th to be eligible for that dividend. So it would be... Six seven for the ex dividend date and July first for the dividend date. And this company, if we go to profile we will see here the key executives what um industry and sector so this company mr david t luji Born 1959, is the president, CEO, and director of Tegna. Now, he became CEO in June of 2017. Yahoo's not going to show you when he became the CEO. With that information, you may have to Google to find it out. But he became the CEO in June of 2017. And so what that means is that we analyzed this company for five years, 29th, starting from 2019. This same guy was the president for all five years. Tegna is in the broadcasting industry, communication services sector. In any event, that is our stock analysis on Tegna guys and remember before I would have to go out get all this information put it together and I'd present it to you guys but now it's all here and it's all available for you that is on the stock sage software website and all for a low price of $129, not a month, but $129 a year. In any event, you guys have a great night, and I look forward to speaking to you in the next video.